Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Awaken the World Live Right Now, A New Earth. It is 6 p.m. on the 11th month, the 11th day of the year of, oh my God, 2020. So nice to see you all. How are you this evening? Namaste. I love you all. I love you because you are a part of me and I am a part of you. We are inseparable. As a matter of fact, we are all manifestations of this one. This one being, this one creative essence that we are made of, swim in, are part of, cannot be separated from in any way. This is the truth of your existence, and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to feel it deep inside yourself. So I'm without Kelly this evening. Um, I had called earlier. Uh, she apparently forgot that we were doing a live video at 6 o'clock. And I expect to see her running in to, uh, you know, interrupt momentarily when she figures it out. And in the meantime, um, what are we going to talk about tonight? Well, we're going to talk about the concept of where we're going. You know, a new earth. What's possible for us? Now, if you look around the world right now and, and you take a good look at what's happening and you're familiar with the usual run of biblical prophecy and, and various other prophets throughout history, it very much looks like, and to be honest, it is uh, at, at a stage where we are experiencing what may be our general end. And when we're talking about general end, we're not really talking so much of the end of humanity, because it won't be. But it's the end of the way of life. The end of what we consider normal right now. And, you know, when we really look carefully at normal, normal is not sustainable. It simply isn't. Here in North America, we represent... 5% of the world's population, and yet we consume well over one-third of the entire resources of the planet, leaving less than two-thirds for the other 95% of human beings on this planet. These are the sort of things that have to change, and they have to change quickly. With climate change, we are forced into understanding that a lot of our uh, farmland will soon become uh, impossible to farm. There won't be enough fresh water around. Things will become too arid, too dry. This can look pretty horrible on the outside when we look at things, if we want to take that kind of fearful point of view. But I would encourage you not to. Not only that, we are surrounded by charlatans by false prophets, by people who would proclaim to be trying to do good, but if you listen to their language, there is no good in what they're trying to do. These false prophets, or charlatans, as I prefer to call them, because they really are just a bunch of clowns, no offense to clowns, are only focused on dividing humanity only focused on the differences. And, you know, it can be very disheartening when you read through even your community group page where you see comments for and against masks and very quickly it dissolves into a... a, a I don't even know what to call it. A hand-slapping match across the internet. If we can't be at peace within our own homes with each other, if we can't be at peace in our own communities with each other, how can we ever expect to be peaceful as a planet? And yet we are being offered this opportunity right now. We are facing difficult times. As I said, starting two years ago, that we were beginning a five-year stretch where humanity was really going to be put to the test. We're only coming to the end of the second year here. There's three more years to go. And it's going to mean a lot of changes. And these changes are really going to be valuable to us if we're willing to allow them to happen. And how are we going to take part in these changes? 
This is the real question for anybody who's waking up these days, is how do you participate? How do you help bring about a new state of being on this planet? And it, it, it isn't based on some grandiose idea. You know, I was very hopeful that we could gather millions upon millions of people across the globe and, and literally pull this planet forward consciously, all of humanity, in one leap. And the science is there to prove that it, it is actually physically possible to do so, and it wouldn't be that difficult. But you can't get unity. You can't get enough people together going in the right direction yet. We have the tools in place, but we don't have the cohesiveness. We don't have the concept that we're all in this for the whole yet. We're still thinking only about ourselves in too many ways. Now, you know, if we look at an, an ant colony, we consider an ant colony a perfect society. You know, every ant has its role and purpose. And that doesn't really speak very well in the way that humanity governs itself. And it doesn't necessarily work very well either. We are individuated creative beings and as individuated creative beings we are here with a particular flavor of that creator and we are going to create and exhibit the universe as we see it through that filter of our personality our egoic sense of self the more refined that personality becomes the closer to the truth that that personality begins to point at over time, the more profound the effects that individual can have upon our world. So who do we trust? In a, in a world full of charlatans and false prophets and, and, and utter confusion as to where the truth is, who do you trust? I would encourage you to trust the inner guru, to listen to your gut. You'll notice when you hear truth that it resonates with you naturally. And the reason it does is because you already knew it. Maybe you didn't quite realize you knew it yet, but it was there. And that's why, because indeed you do know everything. You have the entirety of the cosmos within you at this very moment, and it is accessible. So learn to listen to your highest self. Learn to put that at the forefront when it comes to deciding where truth lies. Now, how do we hope, uh, how do we hope to help? And we're going to throw hope right out the door. So how do we help humanity as a whole take this step forward in such a way where we are going to begin to make lasting change that benefits the species. It's very simple, as I've always said. You just have to be the example. You just have to be willing to reach out selflessly to those around you and to embrace them in love and in kinship of the recognition that they are part of you and you are part of them. Now, yes, there's going to be a lot of members of our system who, due to the dysfunction that's been weighed down upon them, they, they've become broken. They're difficult to reach out to. Those people, unfortunately, are going to end up being the last ones incorporated back in. And the reason be is we, we, we don't have enough of a whole of our system being willing to look upon people struggling in that matter, the homeless, the drug addicted, those with extreme PTSD, an alcohol addiction, violence issues. We are not in a place yet where we're able to look at them with the right amount of compassion, where we can't see our role in what happened to them yet. But this can come. And the way it happens is for us to speak for these things. Speak for this new earth that we're really trying to create. Do not stand against those things that you would judge against this new beginning that's possible for us. To feed them your energy, 
To give them your attention is to only help them grow and stay strong and stay there. It's okay. You can turn your back on those things and instead stand for their opposite. Stand for the love for one another. Stand for sharing and giving freely. Stand for the idea that we're all one and not one of us is less or more important than another. Stand for the concept that no matter whether we agree or disagree, that has nothing to do with our ability to form a close personal relationship. When we allow ego to get in the way of who we truly are, all the problems begin. And, you know, I was saying to Kelly just the other night, people would like to think that ego is individuated in every single being. And it's really not. If you were to stand far enough back from the earth and take a look at it with a little more open eyes, you would see a literal cloud and that is the cloud of ego. It is a singular entity that we are all hooked into and we created it. It is the sum total of every single thought, every single reaction that every single human that's ever been since day one has had and it sits here. We are like little mobile transmitters and receivers. Wherever we're vibrating at, that's what we're tuning into egoically. That's what, receive, that's what we receive out of the egoic cloud. That's why so many of your thoughts, you really have no concept of where they came from. They're always flavored by your current predicament, but it's not like you asked for those thoughts or conjured them into existence. They're just flowing through without your conscious control. Now, yeah, you can grab a little bit of control, just like when you turn up or down the volume of the radio station. But wherever you're vibrating at, that creates that same interface, that same vibrational response in return. And that's what you receive into your mind. And that's what you think upon. So how do we enact real change in a world where change is seeming harder and harder to make, to make happen? Even though it appears we're growing closer together in so many ways, we're also growing further apart. The technologies we use today can be used to unite us in this fashion, but it will never take the place of being in the presence of another being. There's a, uh, a hierarchy I like to follow when it comes to communication, and I would invite you to incorporate in this into your life wherever possible. In person, first and foremost, that's number one preferred method. Number two, via video chat, where you can both see each other and hear each other. Method three, telephone. Method four, texting and all other written communication. When we communicate one-on-one, -on -one, when we are in the presence of another individual, we are harmonizing or disharmonizing with their energy field. We are receiving information at all sorts of levels of being that can never be replaced by the distance that digital creates. So even though I can reach through and feel so much from all of you, to be able to be in your presence or for you to be in my presence will be a totally different experience than what's happening through this screen. In a world facing a pandemic, when fear is the motive force, it can be very easy to isolate ourselves from each other. I would invite you to remember that we only need to physically distance. But socially, we should be coming together more than ever. So many people are struggling right now, and it lies upon us, those of us who realize in truth that there's nothing to worry about and nothing to fear, 
to take that message and spread it, to spread that surety, to spread that love, to spread the idea that this is really going to be okay, that we are being offered a magnificent opportunity to stop this headlong train that will only end up in the derailment of vast numbers of humanity and instead choose a gentler path a path that can lead to a better future for our children and our children's children, and even for us right here alive today. In truth, there is nothing really to worry about. It's going to be okay. But we always have this choice available to us. This is our power. This is our ability to create. And if we can come together as one, we can create something magnificent. Much love to you this evening. Namaste. Have a wonderful, I don't even know, I think it's Wednesday night, maybe, sort of. <laughs> we'll see you again very soon.